uh, you can go through here and by the end of this DVD, you're going to know that you can eliminate the machine from this pyramid of deduction and, and know that the only two possibilities left are either you who needs improvement or uh, needs to learn how to, uh, you know, build some better tattooing habits and skill sets, which we can, we're going to cover in future DVDs, or your client. It's really your client, though. Um, you know, if you're, uh, there, there's seldom a problem with your client <clears throat> as far as that goes, unless they want a tattoo that's, that's just, you know, like a portrait they wanted two inches tall or something like that. There's, it's really not going to be your client or they want a tattoo over an area, you know, that's a problematic area anyway, uh, <clears throat> due to skin problems or things like that. But really by the end of this DVD, you're going to eliminate you know, your equipment as part of this equation. So no longer will your machine be a problem. And that's what this pyramid of deduction does. Is it deduces uh, elements and leaves you with what is causing a uh, problem. So ultimately, you know, most of it's going to come back to you or me as an artist that we need to improve and hone our skills in on certain, uh, uh, you know, technique and things like that that we'll also cover in, in future dvds but this is a good thing to have post it put it in your in your gearbox and and keep it on standby always look at it be humble enough to say yeah i suck at this and i need to get better at it and then go ahead and get better at it this first dvd is going to be about learning your equipment just as any mechanic knows what a certain type of wrench does or a uh, football player knows what different moves are for uh, so a tattoo artist should know what his equipment uh, can do and what makes up the equipment uh, each part and piece we've got two examples here and these are both the same machine and I use this type of machine in this video because it's an import machine which most people who I believe are going to purchase this DVD will be using cheap you know import machines uh, these are the same machine one is torn down and one is is complete out of the package uh, just as it arrived to me right so we're going to go ahead and the first thing we're going to need to realize is that you may have gathered some information off of you various social media outlets or things like that uh, and gotten some good info mixed with some bad info and you're just not sure which is which we're gonna go ahead and like this machine you know, just need to tear it all down tear down everything you, you learned or you think you learned and start from a good foundation and that's what this DVD is gonna do we're gonna learn about our equipment because you can't do anything else with this equipment until you learn what it can do, what it can't do, and how it should properly sound and, and how it should function. So with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and, and label each part of the machine. It's called a tattoo machine. It's not a gun. There's no place in here for bullets. We're not gunsmiths. We're tattoo artists, okay? So first, call your, your equipment what it is. It's a machine, and this is the frame. This is an import machine. It's a bent frame, okay? It's made out of one piece, and they just bend the metal as opposed to a two-piece frame that's welded here, or a cast frame that's all one piece cut from a block, okay? So this is the frame. Hey, another thing I want to go over with you guys real quick is on these import machines that, we, that we're using, <clears throat> I already told you why we're using these. Um, it's what most people are just getting into tattooing or are using because they think a tattoo machine is a tattoo machine. And I did the same thing when I first <clears throat> started tattooing, but these machines weren't so prevalent then. But anyway, uh, you'll hear a lot of times people refer to these type of machine as a bent frame machine. And it doesn't mean that the frame is, is in some way 
Well, let me take that back. Uh, let me rephrase that. It means that right here, this, this, this frame started out as a solid piece of uh, metal. Then instead of uh, cutting it and welding it at the seams right here, uh, they just take and they bend it. You can see there's no weld. Here's a stripped down version of it. Inside there, it's just bent, okay? And that's what a bent frame machine is, as opposed to, say, a two-piece welded machine, which is what this is. This one's been heat treated here at my shop, but this is a two-piece welded frame. Look down in there and see some of the, in better lighting here, you know, it's harder to see because I've got it, um, I heat treated it and oil quenched it, but anyway, uh, this here is a much better, more professional, heavier, industry standard type of uh, machine frame, okay? Uh, yeah, it costs more. The frame by itself costs $35 just by itself, and it's unfinished. You've got to, you know, heat treat it, whatever you want to do to it. But the trade-off is that, you know, you can get this whole machine for 10 bucks. <laughs> as opposed to just a frame that you still have to build for 35 but if you want quality at some point you're going to have to determine whether or not your craft is paying for itself uh, and you're leaning toward you know being a professional uh, another example of a bent frame okay okay this this one here I just heat treated and banged out and made it look all industrial and put gears and crap on it but anyway it's still a Still, it's an import frame that's bent, all right? And uh, I'm not talking negatively about this type of equipment. I'm just saying it's not going to stand up to the test uh, of a tattoo shop, that's for sure, uh, or tattooing consistently for hours on end. It's not going to do it. Uh, you can make some improvements so that it will perform better, uh for you as you tattoo we'll discuss that in other dvds but but this will never produce results for you like for example you know one that i've built uh, you could tattoo all day in this thing never even get the slightest bit warm uh, you tattoo for an hour straight solid with this thing without doing some adjustments and things to it i guarantee this the sun gun's going to be hot or just fail altogether uh you know but I digress I'm sorry back to the bent frame that's what they mean by bent frame okay uh, this actually this frame here now that we're on that subject let me just briefly tell you real quick uh, frame identification this is a clipper style frame this is almost the same the same frame okay it's clipper style this is more like Clipper Bulldog, and then they have your radio f uh, frames, you know, your dial kind, uh, you know, some different ones, you know, uh, that are common on the market. But anyway, uh, there's your bent frame, and there's your solid two-piece welded. They also have the cast frame, which is made out of one piece. They just... Okay, this is your uh, entries for your uh, coil screws entries for your front binding post, rear spring saddle, rear binding post. This is where your tube vise would go, tube vise locking nut, okay. And looking at the machine that's intact, you can see coil, screw holes, tube vise locking nut, tube vise itself, frame, rear binding post uh, and then you have your uh, rear spring saddle your uh, front binding post your contact screw contact screw locking that goes in here armature bar uh, arm, front, front spring rear spring armature bar nipple various insulating washers and your o-ring uh, capacitors this is your coils they're linked together with a capacitor and, and two front solder slug rear solder slug goes the rear binding post goes the front binding post they're linked together with the capacitor same thing on here capacitor rear solder slug front solder slug 
Okay. So we're going to put this down. And in this exploded view of this frame, we're going to once again go over each part. And then we're going to go over what it does. Because if you don't know what each part does, you don't know how the machine should function all together as a unit. Each little ingredient, each nut, bolt, plastic washer, all serves a purpose, uh, an important purpose in making up this whole machine and how it performs. You need to be able to identify each part and know how it sounds when it's properly working so that if something breaks, you can uh, call up and order uh, another armature bar, for example, okay? Uh, you need to learn the proper names to identify each part, okay? So you know, you've got armature bar, rear spring, front spring, two vice uh, clamp, uh, armature bar nipple, uh, insulating washers, looking significant, but these little things right here, if I get a hold of it, are important. Insulating washers serve an important purpose. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, doesn't matter what color they are. They're made out of plastic. Okay, so it doesn't matter what color they are. So rear binding post unscrewed. Various, uh, these go to the coil, uh, coil washers. These are shim washers for the front. Uh, binding post to move your contact screw more to the left and more to the right. We'll get to that in a little bit when we put it together. This is an O-ring. It's important. It makes your machine sound a lot better. Uh, and serves so another purpose we'll talk about in a little bit. Okay. So the tools that you will need to uh, take your machine apart and put it back together are pretty You're simple. You need a set of Allen wrenches. I use this little spring jig. Keeps everything lined up and we put it back together. And then I use another tool. This is just called an armature bar uh, alignment tool. And we'll show you how you use this. You can buy one online, or you can make one out of a pencil and put a slot right through the middle of the pencil and run it up through your tube vise. You don't have to buy fancy stuff to do this. You can make it at home, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and assemble this machine so that it looks like this. And when we do that, uh, I'll talk about each step. Uh, there'll be some still footage in between, some, some images to look at in between each uh, part of video. And I'll give it, explain it all to you as we do it and tell you what each part does, okay? If I'm putting a machine together, it's like this one here. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the coils, okay? When you pick these coils up, these cheap, ins these cheap import machines use a thinner gauge wire than, than do uh, heavy duty commercial type uh, professional machines. So you wanna be careful. There's four wires coming out of these coils on the bottom, all right? And if you can see those, there's one, two, three, four. All right. You want to be careful to pick these coils up as a unit. Don't twist to each one individually or you'll break this wire that goes in between and then you're out of luck. You need, need to buy some more coils or hope you have some extras laying around. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start and I'm going to put these right here into the frame. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start with, with these coils. We're going to do it upside down. Okay, don't let these coils come apart. You can put a rubber band on it or whatever you want. Okay, and the purpose of this washer, when it goes into this, uh, between the coil and the frame, is to shim the washer up. It gives it height so that you can, the armature bar will, will come in contact with the coils uh, at the proper height, not have to dip below the uh, rear spring saddle in order to to strike the front coil first. Coil height is important, and we'll see why here in a little while after we put this together. But you want to start 
with the coils and your coil washer. You're gonna look through the hole right here and make sure that your, your washer uh, and the coil hole there, the washer hole and the, and the bottom of the coil hole is lined up, okay? Once you got that in there, the washer in there and your coil hole lined up and everything, you get your little coil screw, uh, the core screw. Okay, you're gonna spin it down in there. Now when you do this, keep hold of it tight with your thumb. Where my thumb is on top of the coil, uh, the coil, the, the core top. And the reason you're going to do that is because this is going to screw down in here, and once it tightens up, it's going to want to spin that coil, and it'll snap that wire I was talking about earlier, and you'll be out of damn luck. Don't tighten it all the way down just yet. Just get it in there, okay? Then, same thing with the other coil. You put this little shim washer that they have inside there. Okay, slide it in there, line the holes up. You're going to put your coil core screw in there. Okay, you'll spin that in there. Some machines that you get will be a non conductive type frame, so you'll notice there'll be a little yoke in here. It's uh, on some machines. Uh, but that's that's a different lesson for a different DVD. But yokes generally are comprised of the same material the coil core is, so that they match, and they're they're used on non-conductive frames, so that this uh, horseshoe magnet completes the cycle. Uh, at any rate, go ahead and with your thumb here, so that these coils don't spin, just tighten them up. Just snug okay now coils capacitor rear solder slug top front binding post solder slug okay everything's there all right our next step that we would start putting together is we'll take uh you can take from here a multiple multiple directions but i'm going to start with the rear binding post okay Rear binding post hole. Tighten my lid. There we go. Okay. Rear binding post. These little plastic washers that I was talking about, these insulating washers, super important. Okay. One goes there. Another one goes on the inside. These are important. If your machine is not running at all, there is only three possibilities why it is not running at all. One, you have left an insulating washer out somewhere and you're grinding out to the frame. The other reason a machine will not run at all is you've broken that coil wire that goes between the two coils that I showed you earlier in the, in the DVD. The third reason a machine will not run at all Uh, it would be you probably don't have it plugged in. But that's the only reason that uh, the machine will not run at all. There's many reasons why it will run poorly, but only only three uh, right off the top of my head I think of that, that uh, what is saying want to give me grief? It'll make the machine not run. Okay, insulate and washer, slide it on there. Okay. And that's so this metal solder slug does not touch this frame. It has to be metal, plastic, metal, plastic, then metal again, all right? And if you were super fancy and wanted to, you'd put a washer on there too. But you don't need to. This import machine came just like it is, and we're going to put it back together like it is. Okay, right here, your rear binding post goes on that screw. I'm going to show you a clever little trick, okay? Pause it. Take your needle, just like this, and I cut the needle grouping off. All you have left is the needle bar. This is a handy tool, not only for doing the shim washers like I did earlier, uh, but 
for sliding this into the rear binding post and straight up through the rear spring saddle. What that does is gives you the ability to now tighten that rear binding post down and you don't have to worry about this rear binding post spinning and twisting the wire out of the coil or anything like that. It's going to be straight line for your clip cord also. See that? Nice trick, right? Nobody's going to teach you that. Nobody's giving up these secrets. Sensitive tattoo it is because we're kind of nuts, but we want to teach you the right way. If you're going to tattoo at home or wherever you're going to tattoo, none of my business, but I want to make sure at least you know the fundamentals and how to do it the right way uh, with the equipment properly working, all right? Okay, enough rambling. Tighten that up, all right? See, that's straight in line. That clip cord will go right in there, all right? Next, now that that's there, the rear binding post is done, uh, you can look at our coils. And we'll go ahead and just get them tightened up all the rest of the way. Remember, put your finger in the middle there. Don't want them to spin. Snug them up. You don't have to be dang torqued on there with an air gun or nothing. Just tighten them up so that they do not move. And during use, they're going to vibrate. So you want to make sure they're tight enough they're not going to vibrate loose and start rattling around. You don't know if they do. I hope you know. By the end of this video, you, you ought to know. All right. Next, you can take... I'm going to do the front... I'm going to do the armature bar next because for the sake of the video, uh, it's going to be easier. This is an armature bar jig. Uh, you don't have to have one, but... The, its use is helpful in making sure that your armature bar, your rear spring, your front spring all line up tight, uh, line up in a straight line when you, when you tighten them down. I'll show you. Okay, armature bar, rear spring, slotted rear spring. I don't like slotted rear springs, but that's what this machine came with. Okay, there's going to be two washers that go on this that are supposed to be. Now, if there's not on your machine, put two washers on there. Big on bottom, small on top. Okay, and this machine doesn't look like it coming to. And that's, you know, that's the randomness that you get when you order tattoo equipment in, you know, in kits or Chinese machines, uh, import machines. You'll have two machines that look just alike, but they're put together totally different. Uh, so, at any rate, the rear spring should, should have two washers on it. Ideally, it should have something square here holding it flat down, giving it more, uh, you know, pressure on it, but that's another lesson for another type of, another type of machine. What we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and screw this in just a little bit so it stays by itself, okay? Armature bar, okay, then we've got our rear spring, slide it in there, okay? Next, your front spring goes underneath the washers but on top of the rear spring okay we'll get you a side view of this and make sure you can see it real well so you can see me screw it up okay there it is yeah there it was boy when you video something it all comes out nuts all right there it is let me tighten this down just a little bit snug it up with my hand Okay, so you've got armature bar, rear spring is on the very bottom, front spring on top of the rear spring, two washers, and a locking Allen wrench head or star head screw. Okay, now, the beauty of this jig, I'm gonna show you. If I just wanted to tighten this down by hand, once I found the right tool, uh, you would notice that when you tighten this down, these will spin different directions, okay? To avoid that, we slide it in this little jig here, which you can buy or you can make, and a piece of wood, saw the piece of wood and the width of the armature bar and slide it in there. Okay, slide that all the way in, and go ahead and take your wrench, tighten that down, Okay, 
That's good and tight. All right, we'll pull that out. Looking at it front on, you can see armature bar nipple, armature bar, front spring. Everything is in a complete line, lined up straight. Bottom view shows the same thing. Another thing to watch for, this screw does not come out of this hole. Does not even come flush with this hole. It's gonna hit your rear coil if you do. That needs to stay inside that hole, okay? If your screw is too long, file it down. It needs to be inside that hole, otherwise it's gonna hit your rear uh, top uh, coil post, all right? Okay, armature bar assembly is done. Now, we'll take our O-ring. Okay, you're gonna find a lot of times with these import machines that these spring edges are jagged and you know, these are just poorly made, uh, inexpensive, cheap machines. So what I would do if I were going to use this machine would be to check the edges of it, make sure uh, they weren't jagged, uh, make sure they were fairly consistent. And if they weren't, you could take your little nail file and just uh, hit the side of it with the, with the nail file, you know. And what that's going to do is it's going to prevent these O-rings from being eaten up. Okay, put it in there, slide it in there, all right. You can raise this up just a little bit and that pushes it back in there. Okay, there we go. All right, now that that's done, we'll go ahead and we'll take armature bar. Uh, well, let's actually, since this tube vise is this way, let's put the tube vise on first on this, this machine. Depending on the way your machine is set up, you might want to put your tube vise on first because it's going to allow you to use uh, this other tool that ensures your uh, armature bar is straight in line, your armature bar nipple is straight in line uh, over the top of the tube vise. I hate these kind of tube vises also. At any rate, okay, we'll screw that in. Now, and slide this in this hole. Remember, this can be a, a pencil, it can be a screwdriver cut off with a slot cut in it, or you can buy this kind of tool, whatever you want, okay? I'm just, just slide it in there a little bit like that for now. Take my armature bar, my rear spring, all right? And it should also have two screws on it. Uh, this one doesn't, so I have some washers. We'll add one to it. I have two washers or okay locking up once again when you stack these washers make sure it goes you know so the biggest or widest one is on the bottom and the smaller one is on the top stack them like that okay start to screw that in the hole slide it back until it hits the notch of the rear spring okay now what we're gonna do this is still loose enough to give it some play Okay, we're gonna loosen this tube vise. We're gonna run this tool up in here. Okay, we're gonna depress the armature bar down far as it'll go. We're gonna lock this tube vise down. And what we're doing here is we're ensuring with this tool that this armature bar nipple is going to be dead center over the top of this tube vise. Uh, if that armature bar nipple is not dead center over the top of that tube vise, somewhere you're creating drag. When that needle rides through that tube, uh, it's gonna create drag and, and it, you're, it's not gonna flow right, it's gonna be muffled and, and, and bogged down. It needs to be dead center over there, okay? So now that we know it is, we'll tighten this down a little bit, okay? And uh, actually, let me see if this is, find the right tool, one of these 400 tools. Okay, there we go. All right, now using that and take that. All we have left is the front binding post, all right? Remember, the order in which that stuff goes. If you forgot, look at your other one, okay? Insulating washer needs to be on both sides of the frame. Insulating washer one, 
and amazing. This one didn't come with another insulating washer. You can imagine that. Let me get one. Watch this stuff goes on the machine. Insulating washer. Okay. Plastic on the outside. Okay. Front uh, binding post. Pause it. Binding post. Insulating washer. Always insulate against the frame. Okay. Insulating washer on the outside. Insulating washer goes on the inside. Remember, insulating washers protect from being grounded out against the frame. There's only three reasons this machine is not going to work at all. You're missing an insulating washer. That coil wire from coil to coil is broken, like I told you earlier, or you just don't have it plugged in. Uh, either way, you ought to know. You ought to know how to, to, to identify that problem and fix it immediately. If not, you're... you're uh, not ready to tattoo on anybody. You're not ready to tattoo at all. You need to know how this works correctly before you attempt to ever put a needle on your skin or a cantaloupe or anything. You need to know how this thing sounds and what each part does and how they all work. Uh, all the ingredients make up the cake. Every piece on this machine serves a purpose and without that piece, uh, it lacks uh, the ability to perform to its capacity, which on these cheap import machines lacks anyway, because it's not capable of a whole lot. <laughs> anyway, that's for another DVD. All right, we're going to put our uh, screw, our front binding post uh, screw inside the the hole here. We attempt to. Sometimes these washers are a little tight. Just go ahead and. If it's tight, just force it through. Not force it. If it's tight, if it's tight, just go ahead and work it till it goes through onto the. Get that thing on there. I don't want to. Mm. No, I ain't got it. Okay. Let I win. Okay, now, front solder slug. Okay, goes on there, right against the insulating washer. There you go. Now, we'll take our front binding post. Now, something I want to show you on these binding posts. That hole is not dead center of this binding post, and there's a reason for that. All right. If you want to determine which way you put this uh, binding post so that that hole lines up with the center of this front spring and I'll, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. Same thing. Insulating washer. Front binding post screw. Ideally, you should... You, this machine didn't come with it, but you put a washer, a metal washer here too, just so that when you tighten this down, it doesn't crack or push into the, the hole. But this is what this machine came with, so that's what we're going to use. But be aware that later you could run into problems if that sort of mushrooms or gets cracked or forced into that hole in some some way that, that the solder slug could come in contact with the frame and ground it out. Okay. Front binding post screw, insulating washer, frame, insulating washer, solder slug, front binding post, okay? You wanna use the side of this that's gonna keep that hole right toward the center of the, uh, the front spring. So, we're gonna ride with this side. Twist it on there just a little bit. And you can use this if you want uh, as if it were the front contact screw. Okay, you can just hold it on there with your finger and uh, we're going to tighten all this up and check coil heights and everything and here in just a minute. We're just getting it put back together the way it came to us from another country or from your kit, which most likely came from another country. Okay, now front binding post <coughs> and telephone ringing. <clears throat> awesome. Now, I am saying, 
front binding post. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put our contact screw, which is what this is, screwed in here. Okay, get it screwed down in there. All right. Make sure this is this is all cr pretty critical right here. Whether you're using an, uh, an import machine or you're using a top quality, you know, high end machine, name brand machine, or you're buying a machine, say from a shop like um, Sin City, who custom builds machines. tunes up and repairs machines for you. Uh, you want to make sure that at this point everything is lined up. Okay. Tighten that down. Okay. Tight. Okay. Armature bar. Armature bar nipple lined up over the tube vise. We're putting our contact screw in. We're going to screw this down. We don't know yet whether we're, you know, this machine's a liner or a shader. Right now, we're just identifying parts in this video, identifying how to take it apart, put it back together, and what each part does. Okay, we'll do how to set it up as a liner or a shader in another uh, video. Okay, so right now. Let's just keep this at a 45 degree angle so it, it hits the front of the contact screw, or the contact screw hits the front of the front spring. Um, and we're gonna not label this machine a liner or a shader. You can't. Uh, I don't care if it says that the machine does both or that uh, it come as a liner or it came as a shader. I'll tell you why in another video, but Identifying parts and identifying a properly working machine is the focus of this video. So, that being said, we have put this machine back together and we'll get the, the one that we started with. Uh, wow, that's a, that's a real bucket, isn't it? Get ready, get ready to go do a tattoo party with this one, okay. But you know, that's what people think. They get their little machine and they think they're doing big things. And it's at the expense of other people's skin. And if you respect this form of art as more than just some kind of hustle or some kind of thing to do to get extra money, then you'll take the time, which you have because you've bought this video, to learn properly how to use these machines. Okay, two identical machines. Well, they're not identical. They're from the same supplier. Uh, came to me at the same time. Okay, in the same order. But we're going to see some differences in these machines. First of all, that one's got a silver armature bar. That one's got a black armature bar, which really doesn't mean anything. Okay. Uh, this one came with no front uh, contact screw locking nut. <laughs> this one did, okay? Um, at any rate, what we're gonna look at now is a few features that are going to make this machine uh, complete and ready to run. One, uh, one of them is, let me take this armature bar nipple off of here because we don't need it. All right. Okay. By all accounts, I mean, we've put it back together. And from a beginner's eye, they look the same. All right. I'm going to show you some differences and why they're not the same. And what you should look for on your machine. Pull the armature bar down in the front until it touches the front coil. Same on this one. Look at the gap on that coil that rear coil in the armature bar. This one has, you could put a matchbook in there. 
This one here is about the same. You see daylight through those, both those coils. That's a bad coil gap, okay? This coil needs to come up a little higher before you run this machine. So does this one, okay? That being said, let's uh, take a look at the machine we're working on, okay? This front contact screw, or the contact screw and the front spring, it's off center just a little bit. So to fix this, there's there's a couple ways to fix this. Uh, what I would do is you need to get this contact screw to the left more. So you could just tighten this down a little bit more and that'll bring that contact screw over. And uh, we'll do that real quick. Okay. Bing, bing. All right, that's in the front. Okay. And that nickel and dime and all that other stuff is another lesson for another video, but, but it's garbage. And I'm going to tell you why if you buy the other video, which you'll need to do most likely. All right, this is all put back together. Once again, identifying the parts, rear binding post, rear binding post, solder slug, rear binding post, insulating washer, capacitor, rear spring saddle uh, mount, screw, washers, rear spring, front spring, O-ring, contact screw locking nut, contact screw, uh, front uh, binding post, insulating washer, your batteries okay, insulating washer, capacitor, two coils, two vice, two vice locking nut, coil screws, coil core screws, okay. All right. Machines put back together and in another chapter we'll see how it sounds and then we'll, now that we know what the parts are labeled, well, in another chapter, we'll turn it on, see how it sounds, and why it's going to sound like a train wreck, because it will. <clears throat> All right? And then we'll show you how to adjust it so that it's ready to run and sound halfway decent. Uh, okay. See you in the next chapter. Got our machine put back together. Here, this is the one that was in pieces, and this is the one that uh, was out of the bag and we're going to turn them on and and let you hear each one these aren't set up as liners or set up as shaders that's a different dvd and i'll show you how to do that <clears throat> right now we're focused on identifying all the parts on this machine and hearing how this type of machine uh should sound um normally okay for this demonstration you know i'm gonna i'm gonna pretend it's a liner just i'm gonna do that only by the amount of gap i have between the front spring and the contact screw uh, that's I'm it i'm not adjusting coil height uh we're using the machine just like it is okay knowing all of its parts side and back side if this machine's quick listen to geometry if this machine's front binding post is to the center of the front coil or forward the frame is designed to be a shader for longer stroke okay so, uh, softer hit off the end of a dive like the off the end of a diving board if this machine's front binding post is to the center of or to the slightly to the rear of the front coil the frame is designed to be a, sh uh, a liner the principle behind that is the same as a diving board the further out you go on the diving board the more bounce you get the more rigid it is the further back you go so that being said you can adjust these machines to make them liners or shaders they say okay 
but don't be fooled. They're full of crap, okay? Turning this contact screw, uh, you know, more back so that it becomes a more rigid hit doesn't make it a liner. Turning it more forward doesn't make it a shader. That's crap. There's a couple things that make this machine a liner or a shader, and that's not it, okay? We'll discuss it in the next video, but I will give you a free little bonus hint right here. There's only one control on this machine. There's two controls uh, for an entire tattoo machine. Your speed is controlled with a contact screw. That's how fast this machine goes up and down. Zzz, open a contact gap up, zzz, okay? Now, how hard the machine hits is defined by how many volts are going to the machine from the power supply. The more voltage, the stronger the magnetic pull of the armature bar uh, down, meaning the harder the needle hits, okay? So your uh, speed is controlled at the contact screw, okay? Your power is controlled at the power supply. And what that does is increases or decreases the strength of the, of the magnetic pull from these two coils. Um, the more volts, the stronger these coils magnify and pull the armature bar down that much harder, okay? It's only two controls. The other controls come from hand motion, you know, uh, uh, pressure, speed, things like that. But the only two controls on a tattoo machine and power, uh, you know, are this right here. That's your speed. Voltage comes in, you know, you adjust or, you know, increase or decrease that based on client you know, based on client's tattoo, tattoo area, technique you wanna use, things like that. Those are all the variables. But anyway, that's a quick little bonus hint for you. Cool? Okay, now we've discussed the frame geometry. Oh, and the other thing. Oh, I'm giving up too much shit right here. Uh, front coil, this machine, when this armature bar comes down, is always supposed to hit the front coil square on first. Slight gap in the rear. This obviously is a huge gap. I could drive a truck through the gap of that rear coil, but it's okay. That's another lesson for another tattoo DVD, which will be the next DVD. Uh, so, at any rate, there's a couple little bonus hints for you. Frame geometry also. Uh, when this comes down to the front coil, it should not have to dip below the rear spring saddle to do it. It should stay in a straight flush line to do it. It shouldn't have to dip below, okay? Anyway, there you go. Enough free stuff. Ah, uh, that's for the next DVD. Okay, I'm gonna step on the pedal, foot switch, and you're gonna, we're gonna listen to it, okay? And when we do listen to it, you know, I'm gonna let you hear some different scenarios with pieces missing and things like that so we can uh, identify problems. Okay, here we go. Okay, now even though there's all this gap in the back rear coil and we haven't done anything to tune it up or anything like that, and we've got just a little gap in that contact screw and front spring, uh, that's how it, it, should, it should sound, okay? Um, I'm not saying that's a good sounding machine at all. <clears throat> it's not, but that's how it should sound with uh, all the pieces reassembled, okay? Now, we'll take some pieces apart, and for example, as I was talking about insulating washers, okay? Let's hear how it sounds with an insulating washer missing. Let's just take this insulating washer off back here. It doesn't matter which one. We'll take it off and let you hear how it sounds. Minus one insulating washer. Okay, we'll leave the outside one out, off. Keep the inside one. Okay, remember the trick I showed you with the needle bar? Put it up in there, tighten it down. It's a lot more to tighten in there, actually, with that with that insulating washer missing. That bolt goes in the rear uh, binding post 
a lot further and sometimes okay here we go okay insulating washer missing that's all we've done you're gonna hear a big difference in sound and it's gonna sound as I step on the pedal like this nothing big difference remember I was telling you insulating washers are very important without insulating washers you ground out to the frame machine won't run there's only three reasons the machine won't run that's one of them okay put the insulating washer back on and we'll run another scenario say we'll uh, we'll leave the o-ring off something simple like that you're gonna hear not only a big difference in the way it sounds but there's a difference in the way it performs also okay rear binding post insulating washer back on screw in rear solder slug rear binding post okay use the little needle bar you know and, and in other videos I'm going to show you how to tune these up how to make one a liner how to make one a shader things like that tips and tricks that you're not going to learn from uh, any social media outlets or uh, anything like that uh, or buying videos from you know the pros uh, they're not going to tell you what they do to make their stuff perform like it does irritating but let's take off just a simple o-ring okay well actually before we take it off let me let you sound hear how it sounds again uh, now that we put the insulating washer back on okay plug it in clip cord all right there it is back at it okay still sound like a train wreck okay that's what you expect from this type of machine though but anyway uh, let's take off the uh, o-ring and just hear how it sounds hear that that's an audible diff definitely an audible difference okay definitely a difference in the way that sounds now we'll put it back on once you find it right roll to there it is okay put it back on okay and what it did is it closed that gap up too so when your o-ring breaks you're going to notice right away there's going to be a difference in sound okay same voltage everything o-ring back on sounds a little quieter okay still sounds like a train wreck because it is but um we can do let's try another one another scenario with this we could do one where let's say your armature bar was a little bit loose okay this happens once i find the right uh, tool and i'll show you how to take and make these import machines like i say how to tune them up and how to make them perform better later on right now we're focusing on identifying sounds and visually seeing things that will affect your machine's operation okay let's say that armature bar is a little bit loose let's turn it on and watch the front of that it'll slide one way or the other okay I loosened it it didn't slide one way or the other because I didn't loosen it very much but let me loosen it just a little bit more here we go uh, loosen it too much and it doesn't even make contact okay. okay okay let's tighten it back up and you'll see as we tighten it up it brings it closes that gap up front okay at any rate there you go. Sounds like a Kawasaki now. Ooh. Anyway, okay, that's your machine. 
That's your machine put back together. We know how it should sound uh, before a tune-up. You know how it, uh, you can identify all the parts and what they do. <clears throat> We're gonna go ahead and run through a checklist real quick of uh, what each part's function is in the machine. Okay, coils are the heart of a machine. If you have bad coils, you have bad machine. <clears throat> okay, uh, they're magnets. They're wires round around, uh, wound around cores, just like the old study in school, the, the lesson in school, we around the wire, around the nail, and put a battery on there, turn it into an electromagnet. These two are electromagnets, <clears throat> and uh, they complete a circuit. These electromagnets pull the armature bar down, and that makes the machine stop and the tension of the rear spring brings it back up to hit the contact screw to make the circuit complete and, and then it pulls it back down. That's all it is. Uh, it's just a magnet, all right? Uh, tensions on your springs are important. We'll talk about that later. Um, contact screw, gap, all that nickel and dime and all that stuff that you hear, it's mostly junk. We'll talk about that here uh, in a little while and uh, tell you why and how to set your machine up to be either a liner or a shader. Uh, if I got this machine just, just from the package, just like it is, uh, you know, with this armature bar on here like this, I would assume it would be a shader because that's a heavy armature bar and generally you want a light armature bar for a, for a liner. But with the angle of, and the length of this front spring and the angle of this contact screw, you would assume it uh, could be a liner, uh, I mean a, a shader also. Um, so by all intents and purposes, just looking at it right out of the box, I would, I would think it would be a shader, uh, but you can't really tell uh, until you do a couple things, which we'll see in the next, in the next video. But at any rate, there's two machines. Identified the parts, put back together. Now, even if it's something simple and you think you know and we've covered it already, listen again. Take the time to unlearn some bad habits you may have picked up, you know, through various videos or <clears throat> social media outlets. Uh, don't just gloss over it and want to skip right to the parts that are, you know, I want to do portraits. I want to do, uh, what's my, I need to set it up for a liner. You have to first learn the machine itself and the mechanics of the machine. Once you do that, you can move on from that foundation to other uh, parts of tuning and adjusting. And uh, we'll also have videos on technique and things like that. Uh, I was saying this machine here would be set up as a shader uh, just coming out of the box um, like it is. And I'm gonna just listen to it one more time and then I'll let you listen to a shader that I custom built here at the, at the shop okay let's open this gap up a little bit anyway so that at least it's it would be a, a shader even though it's not it's not set up as either or yet all it is is a machine you have to set it up from here from this point you have to set it up and know how to set it up as either or machine it's not ready to tattoo yet at all okay so we're gonna take, you just heard that, and I'm gonna take one that I built here at the shop, and it is definitely a shader. And I'm gonna plug it in, same voltage, everything. We're not worried about voltage or anything. Okay. Much different sound. I'll even turn that down. Okay. Okay. Same type of armature bar on my shader machine. Heavy armature bar, it's not an import one, uh, but same type of armature bar. Uh, it'll run at a lower voltage, <clears throat> which these won't do. These have to run uh, at least eight or nine volts. They don't even turn on till seven volts. Uh, a real tuned up uh, quality machine will uh, turn on at 
mine turn on at three and a half volts and they'll run at five volts. These won't, import machines won't come close to that. Uh, and all that turns into, all, all that equates into uh, unnecessary skin trauma, uh, bad healing, bad tattoo experience for the client. And you wanna avoid all that. You wanna be a confident, competent tattoo artist and it begins by knowing your equipment. And uh, hopefully through this video, you will have done that. And we got some other videos. Uh, my next video will be how to tune up your machine. And that will include how to tune it up as a liner or how to tune it up as a shader. Uh, we'll go over different things that, that uh, make the distinction between the two. But at any rate, by now, go over it and make yourself flashcards. Uh, I've included a diagram in the video to label the parts. Uh, and a machine blow up so that each part uh, is identified. I recommend uh, you can find them on Google. You can find one on my uh, you can find one on my Facebook page, which is Sin City Tattoos uh, T A T T O O Z uh, L L C. Uh, like that right there, Sin City Tattoos. Find us on Facebook or YouTube, and. Uh, <clears throat> We'll get those videos out. I'll edit this. We'll get those videos out. And, and, no. Uh, we'll get those videos out. And uh, just, and we'll post the, uh, the guide on, on, on YouTube. Uh, we'll, actually, we'll post it on Facebook so that you can print out the guide yourself for, uh, for a quick reference in your, in your gearbox or wherever you keep your equipment. Uh, I recommend tape it up in there. And just go over it every so often and make sure you can identify the parts on the machines uh, you know at at random test yourself quiz yourself it makes you better stronger more knowledge sincitytattoos.com thank you for purchasing the video uh, www.sincitytattoos.com or uh, YouTube Sin City Tattoos uh, LLC uh, or Facebook Sin City Tattoos LLC. Uh, phone number 510-633-5120. Questions, comments, give us a call. Uh, look forward to teaching a little bit more. Hope you learned something. Thank you. And just to get you interested in the next video uh, is I'm going to give you a quick little demonstration on these import machines. Okay, here's a set of coils from an import machine. Okay, uh, these are coils for the same type of machine except that I make these coils, okay? Uh, I'm gonna show you a quick difference and a quick reason why. Uh, there's this machine as is will never perform for you consistently um, to produce uh, tattoo after tattoo. Uh, and this is one of the reasons why, okay? And I'm gonna do this on video. Okay, we're just going to take this, set that to the side. I'm going to take this coil that comes standard on any import machine you buy, I promise. Okay, slide this cover off, or attempt to. Let me cut the cover off. I'll cut it off with this. Okay. Coils are the, are the heart of the machine, okay? If the heart is bad, the body is bad, okay? So if your coils are bad, obviously your machine would be bad. One would deduce from that that you would have a bad performing machine. We use copper as the standard by which we measure good uh, uh, other materials uh, conductivity against. We use copper, okay? And in these import coils, once you finally get all this crap off of them, okay? I'm gonna take the wire, the end wire that comes out of the coil, and I'm gonna show you real quick a demonstration that we'll go over in the next video regarding tuning and, and setting up machines as liners and shaders and things like that in the next video. This is just a quick little 
little teaser for you. Okay. These coils I make, okay? This red wire is a red insulated copper wire, okay? Just like on this right here. And if we scrape the insulation off, or you can burn it off, um, okay, you will see in there, I don't know if that's big enough for you to pick up, uh, but if you scrape that insulation off, you will see momentarily, well, I waste video, uh, that is copper wire in there, okay? Now, we're gonna scrape this wire from these import machines, and uh, you're gonna see that, find a better fucking, oh, give me this. We'll just use this, okay? We'll scrape this off, and you'll see that that's not copper wire in there. That is like aluminum, okay? Um, so these import machines that you're getting and using uh, don't even have real copper wire inside these coils. Um, and in the next video, I'm going to tell you why that's important when we set up your equipment as liners and shaders. Uh, but that's what you get when you buy your import machine or your, your eBay kit or whatever. This is, this is what you're getting on the inside of it. If it's a, a $49 kit that gives you 500 pieces of something, I pretty much guarantee this is, this is the kind of stuff you're going to get. Uh, and it's bad from the start. We can fix it and we can make it run great. And I'll show you how to do that in the next video.